What a pleasure. I'm now joined uh, by Donna Riley. Donna, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and talking to us today. My pleasure. So we're talking about the ABET criteria change, the proposed changes to criteria three and uh, five. What are we talking about here? So criterion three are the student learning outcomes for engineers, and those are a long list of skills that we want engineers to be able to have at the time that they graduate. And what's happening with Criterion 3 is that a number of the professional skills are, are being deleted altogether, skills like lifelong learning. Um, and a lot of other skills are now being lumped together into a smaller number of outcomes, which will make assessment very difficult. So what, why, do they, why do these changes, they sound a little bit technical, so why do these changes actually matter to the engineering uh, community? So the biggest concern that I have is that the changes are going to gut the educational breadth that we currently require our engineers to have. And so in Criterion 5, which is the criterion about curriculum, what they're doing there is that there was a phrase that said adequate attention and time must be spent on humanities and social science content. And the phrase adequate attention and time is being removed. So it's really unclear whether engineers are going to get any humanities and social science content except the bare minimum to get them off the zero level of, of humanities and social science content. So why is it important that engineers, uh, I mean, engineers engineers, so why do they need uh, humanities uh, content? Yeah. So the big, the big uh, timing irony about this whole thing is that this fall, the class that's entering engineering schools is the class that's graduating in 2020. So in other words, the engineer of 2020 is going to enter our classrooms this fall and the engineer of 2020 was a report that was written by the NAE back in the early 2000s that laid out a vision for engineers that would be globally competent, able to uh, interface with all different kinds of people from all different disciplines, and our students aren't going to be prepared if we drop the humanities and social science content. So what's the alternative? The process itself needs reforming. It's not so much the outcomes, but what's happening on campuses is I know that programs are collecting enormous amounts of data and not necessarily knowing how best to feed that data back into their system. The program evaluators come to campus and they make suggestions for how to improve your process, but I've heard things on both sides where campuses feel that program evaluators are pointing out things that aren't actually important. So for example, on my campus we were told we had to buy a fluid tank for our fluids class lab. And that has nothing to do with the learning outcomes. I'm not sure why we were told to do that. And ABET people will say, well, that shouldn't have happened. Well, so the, maybe the program visitors need to be trained better so that that doesn't happen. That process of, of how folks are trained and how the site visits happen could be, could be improved, it could be streamlined. Um, and and that's, that's where I would focus on, on ABET. Well, Donna, thank you very much. Uh, plenty of food for thought there. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.